You're listening to a new episode of Girl Down Podcast with your host, me, Aeon. So sit back, relax, and listen as I unpack the uncertainty of my 30s one episode at a time. Welcome you all to another impromptu episode of Girl Down Podcast with me, Aeon. First, to start this off, I want to thank everybody who wished me a happy birthday. As you all know, I turned 34 on December 2nd of this year, and I had a lovely birthday weekend. So I want to thank everybody for the birthday shout outs, the cash apps the just the well wishes i had a lovely time also thank you to listening thank you thank you to all of you who listened to the surprise episode that i put out i guess y'all were really craving for a new episode but it just really made me feel good that even after being gone for a couple of months people still wanted to listen to me and it makes me really excited to bring you just more episodes in 2023 on a regular and consistent basis. So thank you all so much. I know I said I wasn't going to hop back on, but I just got the drones in my bones. Like I really needed to talk about this particular topic because I've been seeing it a lot and it's really pissing me off. So I just really need to give my two cents and just leave it on the table and just really say how I feel. So today we are going to talk about Zaya Wade, but not Zaya Wade in particular, but this really this misconception that people who I feel are transphobic are trying to put out that Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union are trying to exploit Zaya Wade transition and trying to exploit uh, Zaya Wade for monetary gain, which to me is just, it's just ridiculous because it just does not make any sense. So the past couple of weeks, um, Zaya Wade has continued to be in the news as she should. She's a bad, she's a bad bitch in training. We love, y'all know how I feel about Zaya Wade. We are protecting Zaya Wade at all costs. She deserves happiness. She deserves to live in her authenticity authenticity as a young black trans girl. And she deserves that. But we've been seeing her in the news because about a month or two ago, her father, Dwayne Wade, filed to change to legally um, change her name and legally change her gender. And since then, her birth mother, um, I believe her name is Savon Wade, has contested the the name, the legal name change and the legal um, gender marker change. And of course, we've seen discourse throughout the the ch- the the Chitlin Circuit social media sphere. And in my opinion, there really hasn't been any positive. Um, dialogue that has um, come out of it. Really, we've seen sensationalism um, over Dwayne Wade actually going against the grain, supporting his Black trans daughter, and not just saying that he supports her, but actually taking tangible steps like helping his trans daughter to legally um, change her name and her gender which is commendable we're not really seeing discourse amongst the chick the chitlin circuit um social media um blogosphere and webosphere we're really seeing um people doubling down on their transphobia people doubling down on supporting savon wade um people doubling down on um not believing that Zaya is who she says she is, um, not giving Dwayne Wade the space to love his daughter and raise his daughter and just really 
promoting all of this propaganda just about what it means to be trans and what it means to um, be a forum. And you see a lot of language of people saying that, oh, that family is exploiting that child and um, just trying to use the, 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 the idiom of Dwayne Wade exploiting the trying to use that when they when 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 really the spirit of it is folks are transphobic, especially um in the our black community. People are transphobic. A lot of people don't understand one, not just the trans conversation, but actually um parenting and being supportive of a trans child. Um and instead of shutting the hell up and just watching, learning, um, listening, um, a lot of this discourse is, well, we just need to wait. It sh she should just wait until she's 18 and, th and that should be that. And you're, and I recently, this, as of this morning, um, one of the black women, um, content creators on YouTube that does a lot of like pop culture, pop culture analysis. I had to uh, unsubscribe from, uh, from her channel because like she's on that same exploitation and um, Zaya Wade don't really, I was like, I, I don't have time. So before I really get into my deep dive, words actually mean things. And so when people are saying that Dwayne Wade is exploiting Zaya Wade and all of these opportunities, I really feel like people don't know what exploitation means. I think they just heard the word, it sounds sexy, but people really don't know what it means. So let's just go to our friend the dictionary. Exploitation, a noun. Um, exploitation is the act the action or fact of treating someone unfairly in order to benefit from their work. IG, for example, the exploitation of migrant workers. Or two, exploitation is the action of making use of and benefiting from resources. Um, I.e. the Bronze Age saw exploitation of gold deposits. So, I just really think that it was important to define the word um, exploitation. I feel like it's being um, misused in this particular in this particular situation, and I just think that it doesn't apply um, for Dwayne Wade and Dwayne. And let's let's be honest, Dwayne Wade is already wealthy. Deray Way already um is fam famous. The way Way already has a high profile in the the public eye. The way Way even though Dwayne Way is retired from basketball or um he's transitioning to the next part of his career whatever that's going to be. Dwayne Wade is pretty, is still A-list, and he's married to Gabrielle Union. They're a very high-profile, A-list um, type of family. Gabrielle is still acting. Gabrielle is still in the, the prime of her career. So to say that somebody is using their child to exploit them, and the implication is when people say, oh, exploit the implication is that 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 Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle are using the child to get um, monetary gain or popularity gain. It don't get no more financially stable, stable or popular than Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union, and that was even before we started paying to Zaya Wade or we um, were aware of Zaya's trans identity. So this whole and then. When we talk about exploitation, there's been no confirmation that since Zaya Wade has publicly announced that she was trans, that she's making this buku money or she's just getting these opportunities where she's raking in all this money. Mama just went to Paris Fashion Week. She was taking pictures with fashion designers. Oh, she did do a campaign for Tiffany's, but we don't know how much money um, she may, and it's not like she's not in school. She's still in school. She's still a regular kid, and she's just 
I, I think the only time I've seen her speak is when she did like a campaign for a logo for Pride. But everybody did a, it's, it's not like she's um, getting all of these deals right now in her career as a child. And that she's just making all of this money and Dwayne Wade is controlling her money. And like, th that's not the narrative that this family is putting out. From, and I follow Zaya on social media. For From what I'm seeing, she is a child, which I think we, we need to be mindful that this is still a child. This is still a teenager. This is still a young girl, and we should treat her as such and not just um, feeling like she's fodder for conversation just because of the trans part of her, her identity. She's just a child. She's no different than the 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 Kardashian Jenner clan when they were kids, you know, because they're celebrity and really they're influencers, them just getting opportunities just like any other celebrity underage person just to connect with brands and to use their platform, which Zaya does way. Zaya does on her own has millions of followers. I was disgusting to me since Zaya has publicly came out as trans or since her father shared shared that part of her identity with the world, particularly in a black community. Instead of black people who clearly have obvious issues with trans people, particularly trans kids, particularly their own trans kids or family members, if you want to be honest, instead of... um dealing with the discomfort um, that that brings them or dealing with the ways in which the, they have abused or neglected their own children who are trans, instead of trying to be bold or courageous enough to envision a world of um, what truly unconditional love from Black parents looks like when they have trans um, children, instead of trying to especially in the uncertain times that we're living in, instead of just shutting, shutting the hell up and just watching and learning and processing and all of that, what we're seeing or what I'm particularly seeing from um, particularly black cis het folks of het platforms, they're doubling down on not wanting to understand, not wanting to stretch, not wanting to grow. Um, they're easy to paint Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union as the victims. And you you see a perversion. You see them trying to pervert the just the example that Dwayne Wade is trying to set or not the example that he's trying to set, but the example that he's trying to model of what true love, what true acceptance, what really going on this journey um, looks like for black people. Because let's be honest, even particularly growing up in a black household, even if you, and I'm using myself for an example, even though I didn't transition, I didn't um, legally or physically transition as young as I am. Even if you have parents in a, a black household, even if you do on certain some certain level, they're accepting, they're loving. A lot of times, particularly when it comes to when it comes time to take steps to affirm your gender or to do stuff to really transition beyond you just saying, hey, I'm a trans woman, or hey, I want to go by this name or I want to go by this program. Typically, especially for black people, especially in my experience, that's a that's a process that you have to go through on your own because you have a lot of parents where it's like, well, if you're going to do that, that's fine, but you have to do that on your own. I'm not going to support you changing your name or I'm not going to. And it is really sad and it's really fucked up. And when I look back on my life and especially with looking out, looking at how my how great my relationship with my mom is now. It could have been so much better if I would have had like a parent or a family member to support me when I went to go change my name or when I went to go legally change my gender or when I went to go do these things. And I think that this resistance is part of a larger issue um, or it speaks to a deeper level that we have to get 
too when we're when we're really talking about accepting our trans family members especially when the parts of the transition really become real and changing your name legally that's real changing your gender legally um that's real and i think it's okay i i think it's so i think people want they want it they want it both ways they want to not be painted with the transphobic br brush they want it to be painted as allies but when it comes time to actually doing the hard work and pushing back against these systems or confronting these systems, it's like, oh, this is too much or too fast or she should wait till she's 18. Or like when it comes in, speaking about my job, this is something that I help facilitate. I, I, I help people get their name changed in my, you know, my professional job. And legally getting your name changed and legally getting your gender marker changed um, studies have shown and studies are showing that it's connected to so many better um, life outcomes when you're able to um, access a name change and access a gender marker change. You're able to go and find um, gainful employment. You're able to go and access educate, um, education. Um, you're able to go and do all of these great things in the world, which means that you'll be able to make more money, which means you'll be able to access housing, which means you'll be able to have have some type of um, social stabilities, which lessens your chances of having to face violence, having to um, interact with the, the criminal the criminal system. It's and if you could do that as a child, if you could set yourself up as a child in high school where you don't have to wait until you're adult and you have to double like it, like Zaya. In addition to Zaya coming from the family that she comes from. Her just being able to change her name and change her gender. And when she graduates high school, she's able to start on the same footing as all of, as all of her cisgender counterparts. Like, waiting till 18, that's not going to... It's not going to make a world of difference. It's all about giving trans people advantages so that by the time Zaya is 18 or whenever she's finished with high school and she's able to begin her life as an adult, she and every other trans person is able to, everybody's able to start off on the same footing. And like the fact that people just can't see that or, or the fact that people are, are willfully burying their head in the sand because she's too young to me, to me, it's always going to circle back to this is a reflection of how you see the 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 young black trans people in your life, in your family, in your household, and it's it's really a shame, and it's going to require a level of vulnerability. It is going to require a level of honesty so that we can really continue to um, move this conversation forward. And so that we can really support and be there for our trans family who need access to these um, legal interventions so that they can um, live the lives that we all should be entitled to live. I can't tell you when I was able to change my name and my gender, bitch, that's kind of what gave me the license to go to law school, to move out of Baltimore because I wasn't bound to operating my life in a certain way because... Or keeping my life on such a small level because that felt safe. Because I had my gender marker change and my name change, bitch, you really couldn't tell me nothing. And it just freed me up to take more risks because off the bat, I didn't have to disclose that I was trans and have to worry about what the fallout was going to be. My documents say what they say. And it's none of your business. And I was just able to really take advantage of so much um, in my life. And I don't, I honestly don't think that I would be at or I would have had the experiences that I had or in the experiences that I'm having and going to have without being able to change my name and my gender marker. And I just really want, as long as Zaya Way is a child, I really just want us to be mindful of how we are talking about this young lady. She is still a child. And in these chilling circuit social, like 
Y'all have a choice about the content that y'all are talking about, and y'all are choosing to continue to talk about the child. Y'all are cho like y'all are choosing to be um transphobic, and it's just, at this point it's so tired. It's so late. Dwayne Wade is not exploiting this young girl. Dwayne Wade, and the, the shade is when you are the first, people are just going to be harsher on you. People, you're not going to get the credit. It's not fair, but that's just that's just what it is. But the way way is modeling what it could be in black folks and black culture, um, we're seeing them be resistant, but ultimately they're going to have to change because people are as trans as, like when I think about where the trans movement is now and how much it has. Um, shifted so much in the last like four years like just how much the conversation is being normalized just how far we've come even in a such a short amount of time communally we're going to have to get past this hump Tra these trans kids are not going to wait until they're 18 to legally change their name, to change their gender. I, I personally work with parents um, who get it. Like when their kids are toddlers, my kids are saying that, my kid is saying that they're a trans and I want to be there for them and I want to use my privilege as the adult in their life to do what I can. And if that means me changing their name so that they can go through school and they can have a good, a great educational experience from kindergarten or first grade. That's that's what I'm going to do. And I, these kids, listen, these kids, especially these black kids, they're not going to wait until they're 18 to to identify as transgender or to change their gender. They're just so this whole thing of. We're just going to wait till they're 18. Nothing is magically going to change where you, where your child comes to you and you try to suppress it. And it's just going to be suppressed until they turn 18. If you're waiting till they turn 18, you might as well be investing in therapy and all of that right now. Because what you're communicating to that child is, I don't see you. I don't want to deal with this the, the, the discomfort that this could bring to me because now I'm having to push up back up against these systems that I feel comfortable with. You might as well invest in your child's therapy now because what you're telling them is that as their parent, you're not willing to, you're not really, to, really willing to go out there and take the risk for them and to cover them and shield them and do everything you can in your power to make sure that they are set up to live the best life that they can be as that trans person navigating in this world. So I really need the community, especially the black cis hat community to stop, stop taking the easy way out. Dwayne, again, Dwayne Way and Gabrielle Union are not exploiting their, their um, Zaya. Um, they're, they're modeling what it could be and what ultimately is going to evolve to. Kids are not waiting to legally, they're not, they're not waiting. So what you have to do is get over your fear and figure out how to show up for your child. And if that means getting their name legally changed and getting there, it can be done. It can be done. And now there's no excuses. It can be done. I'm doing it every day. I'm helping to facilitate it every, every day. So if you don't want to do it, it's because you want to be complacent in your privilege and you don't want to have to deal with any discomfort. But it can be done. And I am head of the Zaya Way Protection Agency. I'm Zaya's big trans auntie. And y'all going to keep... Y'all want to keep your mouth up off of her because she is going to thrive. She is going to have a fabulous life and her access and privilege. That's going to make it a little bit easier because she's going to have that, that built in buffer where she doesn't have to deal with all of these systems in a way that I would or somebody that doesn't come from, you know, what she has, but she has a family. She has a tribe around her that is protecting her, that is setting up her, that is willing to go through the fire, that is willing to stretch for her. And that's what matters in these situations. And I feel like a lot of people feel attacked because 
for so long culturally when it came to the queer or the trans black person in their family all you had to do was ignore it or not really engage with it and you thought you were a good parent and now now that are showing that you you actually need to show up i feel like people are starting to show their slips and it i mean it is what is not it's not exploitation it's not exploitation it's showing that it's another it's it's another way that you have to be bold in your love for your children, particularly if they show up in this way. It's not exploitation, y'all. It's not. I love Zaya Wade so much. I, I'm happy for the, the possibilities of her. I want to see her. I want to see what she's going to develop and um, grow into. Like, I'm just, I'm happy. I'm happy that she, all of the pay, the, the work that every black trans person has paid and laid the groundwork for, this is why we do what we do so that these young kids don't have to go through what we go through. They don't have to suppress their identity through high school. They don't have to hide so that they're able to have these formative experiences in their youth as they are so that once they, they don't have to wait to transition and have to, like when you transition, especially like at the high school, you have to start all over again. So I'm just so happy for her. And me, as for me and my household, we're protecting her at all costs. So if I see you talking about exploitation or devil's advocate, I'm just going to disengage because you're not ready. Y'all are not ready. And I will end this by saying, y'all need to get ready. Y'all need to get ready. Y'all need to get ready because these kids are not going to stop being identifying as trans they're not going to stop um, transitioning because of your complacency and because of your discomfort. Their happiness and their life matters more to them, and it should, than your discomfort and your casual transphobia and bigotry. So that's all that I have to say for this episode. I don't know if I'll come out with new episodes before the new year, but if I don't, I hope you all have a lovely holiday season, a lovely, safe holiday season. I hope you're able to connect with your family if you have good relationships with your family. If you don't, I hope you feel inspired to start new traditions. Um, I think that's not preached enough, creating and starting your own new traditions for yourself. That's what I intend to do. And I will see y'all very, very soon. Take care. Thank you for listening to another episode of Girl Down Podcast with me, Aeon. If you like the show, please be sure to go on over to Apple Podcasts and rate and review this podcast. Also, make sure that you're engaging with me on social media. Also, if you have any inquiries or you want to send me any questions, be sure to email me at girldownpodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, bye, y'all. <laughs>